in the last lecture uh, we discussed the concept of the examining of the normal network traffic signature the understanding of the normal network traffic signature is equally important the reason is uh, unless until you don't know what is normal you cannot distinguish what is abnormal so today in this lecture we will see the examining of the abnormal network traffic so abnormal means uh, which is uh, deviated from the regular behavior that is called abnormal so in the in general in a signature based uh, intrusion detection and prevention system this uh, abnormal activity can be identified with the by comparing with the signature but in case of anomaly based uh, intrusion detection system the abnormal will be identified with the help of outliers because uh, in case of uh, uh, in case of intelligent uh, techniques uh, if you look at uh, the similar type of things will be grouped into a cluster the one which are left over that is which are not fall in any cluster may be may become the outlier that means which is uh, not uh, following a regular pattern so in intelligent techniques uh, we'll use that is especially in the case of uh, anomaly based intrusion detection systems uh, the abnormality will be identified with the help of uh, outliers in case of uh, the signature based idps first uh, we need to understand the signature patterns of the traffic for the abnormal uh, for the normal behavior then we can write a rule so that uh, which is not following that rule may become the abnormal in this uh, categories will be like this informational traffic might be malicious but could be used to verify whether an attack has been successful or not reconnaissance attacker set up to gain information any attacker will perform the first stage is information gathering then followed by the reconnaissance reconnaissance is the technical gathering technical information gathering by the attacker the technical information may be which port is open which port may be closed which port is closed what type of services running on these ports this kind of information next one is unauthorized access that is traffic cause caused by someone who has gained unauthorized access next one is the denial of service traffic might be part of an attempt to slow or halt all connections on the network device that means uh, that means the abnormality may come for these following reasons so one one may be to gain the information or some information related thing or attacker may is getting the information of the target may be conducting of unauthorized access denial of service etc the examining for example if you look at the ping sweeps what is meant by ping sweep whenever a ping command is used with the broadcast ip of the broadcast ip of whenever a ping command is issued to the broadcast id of a network segment or a subset subnet then a ping sweep will happen that means the ping uh, icmp echo request will go to all ip addresses in that subnet that is what is called ping sweeping so which is also called as icmp sweep used by attackers to determine the location of the host attackers sends a series of ip icmp echo request packets in the range of ip addresses you cannot ping each and every uh, you cannot ping each and every ip address in the subnet range instead if you can ping broadcast ip the request will go to every ip address basically the ping sweep alone does not ha cause harm but what will happen with this is um, they will uh, the attacker will come to know the uh, the live host information and at the same time whenever he get the live host information he can also uh, scan for the what are the open and closed ports and services running on those ports ip addresses used in the ping sweep should be noted in order to track further activity that is the that is the information that we will get uh, with that an idps uh, could be configured to transmit an alarm and uh, block transitions uh, if uh, this ip attempts to connect to a specific host on a computer that means uh, we have observed a ping sweep is coming from a particular ip address then afterwards then after some time that uh, the same ip address is making a connection establishment then you have to make a suspicious uh, thing that uh, 
since uh, okay that you have to you have to make an assumption that uh, okay this person has uh, gone for the ping suite and identified the ping uh, ip addresses in the subnet or in the internal network and now he is trying to attempt a connection and uh, getting the info, uh, maybe maybe in future he may go for launching of the attack so in this way you are supposed to make a um, make a uh, plan and accordingly you have to write a rule and inject into the uh, inject into the uh, idps let we will consider uh, the virtual machine in this i am going to use the kali linux uh, and uh, the windows 7 operating system so the both uh, kali linux and windows 7 was configured with the host only adapters so when we have discussed in the last lecture that uh, in for performing this uh, uh, network spoofing and all the the uh, network interface card must be configured with the uh, promiscuous mode so the promiscuous mode can in the promiscuous mode you can listen to every every packet going on the traffic so for this uh, whenever you uh, select the host only adapter so if there are very various adapters that are available here whenever you select the host only adapter and click on advanced in the advanced you will find adapter type promiscuous mode in the promiscuous mode by default it will be in deny mode so, but uh, you change it to allow vm that means uh, allow the virtual machines to uh, sniff the packets then only the wireshark sniffing or wireshark packet tracing will be recorded either it may be wireshark or either it may be tcp dump or it may be wind dump or maybe any other thing so allow vms so you are supposed to select the allow vms and uh, go for ok like that uh, the same thing is for the windows 7 also in windows 7 also you are supposed to do the same uh, same activity that is uh, you have to allow the promiscuous mode that is uh, allow the virtual machines to uh, listen to the packets that are going on the subnet of this particular host only adapter once you do this then you can go to the uh, kali linux and at the same time for the windows 7 also to the windows 7 in this uh, you can uh, use the command called uh, nmap uh, anyhow uh, anyhow in the window uh, kali linux uh, you will be finding this uh, tools uh, that is scanning and uh, vulnerability scanning tools general network scanning tools and uh, the uh, the tools which is used for uh, creating the exploits and firing of the exploits so the all these things you will find in the kali linux so it is recommended to download the kali linux and uh, also uh, for the topics in this course uh, you need to uh, have an uh, uh, operating system called security onion so you uh, in meanwhile you try to download the security onion at the same time kali linux and uh, either any of the windows operating system either maybe windows 7 or uh, maybe older operating system is better uh, for practicing purpose so windows 7 if you have it is well and good otherwise you may download windows um, xp which is uh, outdated version uh, because in 2014 windows uh, microsoft has given up the security updates and uh, they asked to change everyone from windows xp to windows 7 or any other latest version so now you will not find any security updates for the windows xp so you may use that uh, as a uh, toy operating system for uh, practicing uh, the ethical hacking or uh, the kind of uh, intrusion detection prevention activities so that is for the uh, that is for the lab setup so i will i will tell you how the security onion kali linux and uh, windows operating systems to be configured i will post a separate video for that so accordingly that you can uh, prepare and uh, be ready for the uh, next co next topics that we'll discuss in the course so in windows 7 uh, in order to have uh, in order to know what type of traffic is coming in the windows 7 you must have a, a tool that is a sniffing tool that may be a wireshark if sometimes uh, because it is in the virtual machine sometimes the wireshark may not be installed even though it is installed sometimes it may not listen to the uh, thing so for that uh, the best thing is uh, you may go for you may go for wind dump 
So WinDump is a very simple and lightweight uh, uh, application. Uh, it is it will run on the command prompt. So with this, uh, uh, you may also record the log of uh, uh, you may also record the log, and you may divert the uh, you may divert the whatever the, uh, the traffic that you observed on the command prompt to a pcap file, and uh, the pcap file later on can be ported to the Windows uh, sorry Wireshark or maybe any other UI tool for analysis purpose. So window, uh, wincap, uh, winpcap.org is the website where you can download this WinDump. WinDump is uh, maybe of two k, uh, it is less than one MB size, so you can easily um, download and port it to your Windows 7 operating system. Anyhow, I have downloaded the Windows WinDump and uh, placed in this folder WinDump, and uh, I have kept this particular WinDump in the runtime environment so that from anywhere in the from the Windows uh, operating system, you can access this. So here is the uh, here is the command prompt, and uh, uh, let we'll see what is the IP address of this uh, Windows uh, uh, IP config. So the IP address of this is 192.168.1.42. Now what I will do is uh, I will start this uh, window. Uh, that is. Windom. Now it is listening to the network interface. Whenever it is listening to the network interface, now it will, since it is in promiscuous mode, so it can listen to every every traffic that is going on the communication channel. So currently, currently there is no activity is going on. But uh, first of all, uh, general activity that will be happened in every thing is first uh, it will resolve the. Uh, IP addresses and its uh, physical addresses with the help of ARP and all. So you look at here, some activity is going on. So the ARP is there. Who has uh, ETH-PC? ETH-PC is the computer name of this uh, Windows 7. So Windows 7 username is the ETH-PC. That is. Uh, so this is what the computer name of this uh, uh, virtual machine. So the reason it is asking that uh, who is having this uh, ETH underscore PC, uh, dot PC. Uh, so it is asking the uh, my laptop and uh, it is getting the physical address of it and recording. And this is the process of the ARP which is happening currently. So since there is no network activity is happening. So now what I will do is I will go to the uh, the Kali Linux and I will try to uh, scan the Windows uh, 7 operating system. For uh, some uh, some information, like one ninety two dot, uh, or we can simply ping operation will do it. Ping one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot one dot forty two. So here ping is not happening because uh, I have enabled the firewall on Windows seven. So ping is not happening, but uh, you can see the ping request which is coming here. Okay, so you look at here I, from one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot one dot thirty three, which is the carrier Linux uh, operating system IP address. Uh, to the ETH and hyphen PC, ICMP echo request is coming with some ID, okay, and sequence number. The ICMP packet sequence number and the length of the packet is 64 bit, uh, so 64 bytes. So like that, uh, you will get the information. Uh, so that means even though you won't get the reply here, even though you have enabled the firewall and you won't get the, any reply, but still you can capture the packets of uh, ICMP echo request. That is what the beauty of the uh, what call sniffing tools. So the same kind of sniffing tools, either wing pcap or any pcap uh, things, will be used by the intrusion detection systems also. That is the reason, even though you turn off the firewalls, uh, the IDSs will be placed behind the firewall, and uh, the one which are passed through the firewall will be easily sniffed by the easily sniffed by the uh, the IDPSs. So now. This is a general way of this is a general way of eco, ICMP echo request. Now what I will do is I will close this uh, ICMP echo request. That is uh, ping operation. Now what I will do is I will go for nmap scanning. So as I told you, this nmap scanning will give you huge traffic. Nmap uh, 19.168.1.42. So let will see what type of uh, traffic uh, and what is the uh, frequency or what is the flow of traffic. Uh, uh, into this. Now you look at uh, the ARP who has 19.168.43.1. That means which is the network ID. You look at the 
plenty of traffic is coming into the network because uh, the nmap scan is going on there you you look at the difference uh, that is a simple ping operation and uh, using of nmap scan so the traffic flow will all of a sudden it rise okay, we have seen in the last lectures that uh, if there exists any sudden increase in the traffic uh, then idps will become alert okay idps will become alert and uh, they will do necessary action like uh, disconnection of uh, already existing connections and all but if it is a simple attempt to just scanning of the network but still if the idps is uh, disconnecting all the connections and again reconnecting uh, obviously it is a additional burden for the server when one more thing is uh, that is the reason uh, you need to understand what, which traffic need to be blocked and which traffic need to be uh, allowed that should be taken very carefully so and one more thing is uh, uh, one more thing is out of this traffic uh, uh, you can say uh, one more thing is uh, here you look at here uh, for every request for every request uh, it is asking for arp who has 192.168.43.1 that means uh, arp request is going to the network id that is uh, 192.168.1.1 uh, uh, so it is asking that who is having this ip address so we can see we can see clearly okay we can see clearly the same uh, same kind of uh, operation when uh, when we will go for the subnet range scan like for example 192.168.1.24 uh, by 24 so let will go for scan of the entire subnet now you will find more information regarding this so you look at here uh, arp replay uh, laptop 343 430 is giving you the physical information and arp is getting uh, arp request is coming like this 192.168.1.2 who is having this 1.2 okay who, from where from where you are getting this request you are getting the request from 1.33 1.33 is the ip address of the kalinux so but uh, even though kalinux is doing this uh, how this windows 7 is uh, can be in a position to Of this traffic uh, because it is in the promise case mode, okay. So like that, uh, it will trigger uh, what is the physical address of uh, so and so IP address uh, in the entire subnet range. Even though you got the reply here, even though you got some information here, but still the Nmap has done this uh, extensive scan of the entire subnet, uh, ranging from 192.168.1.2 to 192.168.1.254. so all ip addresses you can find here slowly you can, slowly your windows 7 is spooking because uh, i have a, i have allocated uh, um, only 1 gb of ram so you require some sufficient ram for this to uh, immediately capture and show on the screen so this is uh, ultimately the aim ultimately the um, observation that you are supposed to make is uh, the network interface must be in the promise case mode and uh, with the promise case mode uh, you can also spook the arp packets Is have, this is going on anyhow the arp echo request and echo replies uh, arp replies and uh, request can be listened by everyone in the network so that is the reason we can get uh, what are the what are the responding what are the responding ip addresses you look at from the 2 3 4 5 6 they are not responding anything but uh, if you look at uh, while coming to the 42 42 is the ip address of windows 7 when you come to the 42 or any other any other operating system that is running on the virtual machine say for example if you attach any windows xp or any other thing then obviously uh, obviously that uh, that may that may give the reply for the uh, corresponding ip address that i am the IP, i am the i am having this particular ip address with this physical address then that will also be captured in this okay so i hope by this time you got the uh, you got the information regarding Uh, how uh, this uh, scanning will be performed and how this uh, traces will be scanned uh, sorry traces will be recorded and one more thing is uh, uh, firewalls so in the windows firewall if you look at uh, um, this uh, currently the firewall is on so in general uh, usually the practitioners of the hacking hacking activity uh, will turn off the firewall and will do it now I, what i am doing is i am not turning off the firewall i just only i am uh, Uh, going for enabling of the icmp only icmp echo request uh, will come and uh, will respond to that uh, so in inbound rules you can turn on the fire icmp firewall rules uh, uh, and uh, you may work with that uh, okay next one is in the case of monitoring because the firewall activity monitoring is also 
uh, is also uh, a functionality of the firewall that is activity monitoring. You can see here in the domain profile, private profile, and public profile activities, uh, you can find uh, you can find the logging of the activities like. Uh, the logging set logging settings will be recorded in the system root system 32 log files firewall and p firewall dot log. So currently that nothing was recorded in this. So usually the uh, based upon the firewall settings that you make the activities will be recorded. So that is uh, here um, we have made I have made by default like a log dropped packets uh, no and uh, log successful connections no. So I have not recorded any con successful connection or any dropped packets so that is the reason nothing was mentioned here so like that you can also opt for what are the different different uh, uh, properties that you can set uh, so that uh, that uh, related traffic will be recorded in the uh, firewalls so by using nmap uh, one can do the evading of the firewalls uh, that means scanning by evading firewalls so that is uh, you may experience that uh, evading of the firewalls by performing by using some commands like uh, uh, the uh, stealth scan or uh, fragmented scan this kind of things uh, that that will not be recorded in the firewalls uh, so uh, if it is not recorded in the firewalls who has to cast that obviously the one who is behind the firewall has to cast that who is behind the firewall idps is behind the firewall so uh, for that purpose uh, you should have the understanding of this uh, uh, abnormal traffic so and also you should also have the knowledge of uh, how the scanning will be done by the attackers to know the information so by by this time you come to know uh, you come to know that uh, the uh, the abnormal traffic uh, will be coming into the network uh, all of a sudden that means that there is a sudden increase in the traffic rise and uh, this may be due to the nmap scan or maybe any other scans performed by the attacker especially to to identify what are the open and closed ports, it may become it may be a ping sweep, ping sweep, or it may be a scan which is to avoid the firewalls. Either it may be a scan which is to uh, which is to perform the perform fragmentation attacks, or it may be any other thing. So, uh, so first understanding of the firewall is required, and understanding of the normal traffic is required, and next one is understanding of the abnormal traffic is required. Now the question is how to practice this nmap. So my recommendation is uh, uh, try to install the Kali Linux uh, and uh, any other vulnerable operating system uh, or uh, maybe an uh, outdated Windows operating system and uh, you may connect it and uh, you can also find, I will give you the link here uh, that uh, uh, you can also download a Windows XP, vulnerable Windows XP operating system from uh, my Google Drive, I will give the link here. Uh, so you can download from that, it, may, it is of around um, uh, uh, 2 GB to 3 GB size. So, in which I have included all vulnerable operating vulnerable applications in that. Uh, that uh, that means uh, it consisting of vulnerable FTP, vulnerable uh, web server, it consisting of vulnerable PDFs, uh, vulnerable Java install uh, Java software. So, all vulnerable things I have included in that uh, Windows XP, and um, that image I have placed that is a uh, uh, virtual machine image I have placed in my Google Drive, and I have given the shared link for that. I will give that link so that you can download that and you can also practice with that also. Or you may also make your own vulnerable applications and you may practice. This is what I could say uh, for practicing purpose. And afterwards, uh, uh, I will also recommend you to download the Security Onion and uh, Kali Linux uh, for uh, rest of the contents to discuss. Uh, that is, uh, uh, that is especially uh, uh, in during the SNOT installation and analysis of the writing of the SNOT rules. From, from where we need to, uh, from how to how to know the nmap and its uh, options. First one is either you may go to the uh, nmap help and you can get the information, or you will find the you will find over the internet like this uh, uh, nmap cheat sheets. So this nmap cheat sheet uh, will give you every information and the corresponding switches switches in the sense corresponding options. To use with the nmap for example i want to only uh, know the target specification like uh, what is the cidr notation what is the target ip addresses what is the ranges etc then this kind of switches to be used i want to know the i want to perform the scanning on that so i can go for self scan and tcp port scan udp port scan 
and uh, acknowledgement port scan, window port scan, like that uh, I can do various port scanning techniques with the proper options, by placing proper options. Either this option may be used along with the nmap or after uh, mentioning of the IP address also you can mention it. Any In any order you can place uh, uh, so to get it. So the, whenever you want to do it from the command prompt, uh, so this can be used. Or you may also use uh, a graphical user interface version of the nmap also for scanning purpose. And uh, host discovery, uh, for host discovery also you will, you will use uh, various other options like this. Or you may use the combination of these options. So all these uh, activities will be performed at once in a one single scan. Next uh, is uh, port specification. And port specification, uh, like you can give the range of ports. Like I want to scan 21 to 25 and 80 ports. So like that also you can mention the range of the ports that you want to scan. And uh, and uh, services and version de detection. So what, uh, what type of service is running and what is the version of that service. So whenever you know the version of the service, then automatically you may use the exploit DB and come, come to know uh, what are the vulnerabilities available with this version of the application. Because why the versions will change in general, if they find any security lapses or any other thing, then security patches will be released. So the some specific versions of the applications may be having security vulnerabilities. So by this by this switches, you will come to know the service and version distribution, and you can uh, you can identify uh, any vulnerability via uh, via knowing the version number and um, going to the vulnerability databases and identifying the vulnerability information. Like that, uh, timing and performance information, uh, NSC scripts. So Java will uh, sorry Nmap will also support some scripts with which you can find the enumeration activity. That means uh, getting complete information about a particular service or an, running on a particular port. And here are the firewall and IDS evasion and spoofing methods. So here are the switches. These are the switches to be used for that purpose. So these are the. This is the like a cheat sheet. I will provide this approach. Uh, you may also download from internet also just to type the cheat sheet of uh, the Station X, which is a very power, very renowned uh, cyber security company from where they have organized this uh, uh, cheat sheet like this. And you can also download from the internet. And here also a beautiful diagram has been given like to represent the synchronous scan, TCP scan and uh, finished scan for the students uh, who want to write the certification examinations and uh, general examinations also. They can easily remember just by looking at these diagrams. So that is the reason uh, um, uh, they have near, clearly mentioned or clearly uh, placed these particular diagrams. You may go through these diagrams. The same diagram what I have asked, uh, what I have that is same topic that is TCP, uh, what you call TCP vulnerabilities and TCP related information that I have explained in the lecture. Uh, in a short form, they have mentioned in the diagram, diagramically. You can, you may also go through this related to FTP, which will take the service of the TCP. Uh, also mentioned here, one example has been given here. So I hope by this time you come to know how the Nmap can be used and what are the resources for the Nmap to be used by having the understanding of the the traffic, how to observe, how to look at, we'll see what are the different abnormal traffics that will come into the, uh, come into the target system or will be, in general, will come into the uh, any net network. So ping sweep is one thing. So in which you look at here, when, when the ping sweep is happening, you can find at the target from one single source, for a particular single source, you are getting the, uh, you are getting the ICMP echo request. So dot one, two, three, four, five, six, up to, the last IP address in the subnet. Next one is port scans. Uh, that is which port is open, which port is closed, which port is having which service and uh, service versions, etc. Attempt to connect to a computer's ports to see whether any are active and Disney. An attacker who finds an open port can exploit uh, uh, any known vulnerabilities associated with it. So signatures of a port scan typically include the synchronous uh, synchronous packet sent to each port on IP address. It will be looking like this whenever you observe in the traffic. So the the, tra the request is coming from uh, 192.168.1.110 to 132. So all are all the requests are coming from 110 to 132 only. But uh, you look at uh, uh, it is coming on different different ports. 
to check for different ports. So one, two, three, four, five, up to thirty-one here. Like that, you can observe. So in Windows Seven, also if you look at uh, the command prompt, uh, here also you can find uh, whenever you have this. Uh, so here you can find uh, so ethpc dot one thirty-seven. That is the port number. So it is uh, it is pinging to the port number here. ethpc dot uh, uh, five eight six nine four. So this is the port number. Like that, you can uh, identify. This is that means. Uh, uh, There will be a slight difference between the trace collection in the Windows, uh, sorry, WinDump and uh, Wireshark. Yeah? So that uh, that is a small difference you can observe. Uh, anyhow, whenever you place in the graphical user interface and if you want to analyze, almost it will look like the uh, same pattern, like this, whatever you have seen here. Next one is uh, random backdoor backdoor scans. Backdoor in the sense uh, an undocumented or unauthorized hidden opening. Through which an attacker can access a computer, program, or other resources. So for this, what they do is they will try to inject some Trojan programs. Trojans are the backdoors, backdoor entries. They won't come from the front door. They will always come from the back door. Backdoor means what? Uh, here it is nothing but uh, they will identify the attackers in general will identify the uh, open ports and uh, service vulner uh, vulnerabilities on the services running on the ports. So. Through that vulnerabilities, the, uh, if you inject any vulnerable program, then it is said to be Trojan. Okay, so Trojan programs, applications that seems to be harmless, but uh, can cause harm to the computers or its uh, files uh, whenever it is activated by the attacker. So specific Trojan scans will be like this: vanilla scan. Vanilla scan in general will do the port scanning from the zero to sixty-five thousand five hundred thirty-five. That is the maximum number of ports available on the computer. Why they will do vanilla scan? They will do vanilla scan to especially to know what are the active and live ports, okay? Open ports. Next is strobe scan. Scan only ports that are commonly used by the specific programs, like uh, web services uh, or uh, FTP services, etc. A common type of strobe scan such as IP addresses for the presence of uh, specific Trojan program, okay? So, if a Trojan program has already in operating in the system, then attackers can save uh, themselves the time of installing a new Trojan program. So, in the previous lecture, someone asked the question of uh, uh, that is uh, how to know the IP address of a uh, computer in the internal network. There, so it is uh, just by via social engineering methods. Uh, one may create a Trojan program and wrap it with the original uh, or a genuine application. Whenever the genuine application is installed, in, without knowing to the user, uh, in the background this Trojan program will also be installed. You may be seeing this kind of uh, things in the when you download uh, any software uh, um, uh, from the internet, uh, like from MediaFire or any other uh, things where there there are uh, file file hoards or some other websites. Uh, when you download the applications and install, without knowing you, some other applications will also be installed. So this is the fashion uh, in which uh, the attackers will uh, tempt the uh, victim to make you them to download the software by pretending it as the original one. But whenever they try to install it, in the background these Trojans will be installed. So this is the way this uh, thing will happen. So a simple example of uh, uh, the Trojan programs and ports: uh, Trojan dot ASP ROX, which will use the TCP port. Uh, Uh, for on the 80 and 82, like that, uh, uh, there are some uh, well-known Trojans are there. They are using the protocols like this uh, and ports, uh, port number. This, this table is showing an example. A scan for single host for existing Trojan, uh, like this, uh, only for a single host source. Like uh, it is sending uh, what you call uh, the 110 is the port. Uh, sorry, 110 is the IP address, which is giving you the request on the 132. And here, synchronous, synchronous, uh, RST, synchronous scan, RST, RST, synchronous, RST. Why to reset again and again? Again, why, why to, re, why to go for synchronous? So there is this, this pattern of uh, uh, traffic uh, will give you suspicious thing that uh, that that uh, the Trojan is trying to link a reverse TCP connection to the uh, attacker. So by sending the synchronous and reset, synchronous reset, synchronous reset. That means uh, that means it is making an active connection. Uh, that means the connection is making uh, a live environment. I can say a continuous connectivity 
want to maintain between the uh, between the trojan pro program and the attacker's mission that is what the uh, observation you can make here and uh, one one more thing is nmap scan i just know as i to i was shown here in the current lecture that uh, nmap scans so here you can perform the synchronous scan finish scan acknowledgement scan null scan exma scan vanilla scan or maybe any other scan that are supported by the nmap so here is a example that uh, from 195 to 194 uh, tcp connection is coming on uh, here synchronous scan is there okay so a again 195 to 194 synchronous scan 195 uh, to 194 synchronous scan so that means you but uh, uh, so you look at here the continuous uh, uh, traffic that is observed is, is having all synchronous packets okay all synchronous packets so continuous synchronous packets was sent uh, so what is the need of uh, continuous synchronous packets the continuous synchronous packets will be sent uh, because uh, whenever the synchronous packet is received by the target uh, or by the server in general they will it will create a half open connection that means uh, some uh, what you call it, temporary memory will be created for the uh, for the connection so that uh, the, whenever whenever more number of synchronous scans were performed automatically that many that much memory will be allocated uh, that means that many number of scans into that much memory so that is required memory so that much memory will be allocated thereby Uh, the server will not have the memory to allocate for the genuine processes thereby it will cause the denial of service attack next is attacker often avoid launching well known attacks use waiting intervals to fool the detection system so they will use uh, they will send one fragment first and wait for some time then second fragment then wait for short time then third fragment then they will wait for long time and fourth fragment like that so this is scan throttling uh, often used by the attackers to delay the progress of an scan over hours the days or weeks so reviewing log files manually can be overwhelming uh, must check them and identify potential attacks so an idps can help you with this with this task how idps depends upon the extensive database of uh, attack signatures so whenever whenever a fragment has been received and the next fragments have not received for long time then such uh, rules you can frame and you can inject into the idps so easily they will detect uh, that uh, kind of signature patterns next one is falsified ip addresses it may be via spoofing or maybe anything or maybe fabricated ip addresses you may find some tools like ip changers uh, um, mac changers etc so they may use this uh, falsified ip addresses uh, attacker can insert a false address into the ip header and uh, also known as ip spoofing this attack is also called as ip spoofing a land attack is an example of this what is this land attack occurs when a detected ip packet uh, the same source and destination ip address so it is just like uh, uh, listening to itself okay, this kind of thing this is also called as land attack so here both the source address and destination address will be the same local host uh, source spoof is another example that is um, that is uh, whatever the packet reply will be there that will be sending to the 127.0.0.1 so keep on it uh, it will be fall into the loop the system will be falling into the loop it is sending the packet out and again receiving the same packet okay so falsified port number or uh, protocol this is one kind of uh, 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 possible attack so protocol numbers can be altered protocol should never be set to zero or negative so this sometimes these are the values may be set in the uh, set in the protocol in general you cannot set to negative because uh, they will use the unsigned integers there so whenever you say unsigned integer obviously it will be from 0 to 65535 okay but whenever you find a port number as 0 then some problem is there that you are supposed to inject suspect so these are this rules can be framed easily in the idpss and uh, you can inject into the idpss next is uh, illegal tcp flags so what are the illegal tcp flags uh, like uh, uh, example of synchronous and finished flags misuse synchronous finished flag must should not exist uh, in a normal traffic that is a uh, combination of uh, that is in a one in a one packet uh, you should not enable synchronous and but at the same time finished flag also or synchronous finished psh or synchronous finished rst synchronous fin and rst psh 
So these are the flags should not be enabled at once in any single packet. So which is also sometimes called as XMAS scan. Okay, we have seen this XMAS scan in the TCP discussion. Packets uh, should never contain FIN flag by itself. SYN only packet should not contain any data. So these are the things you should uh, uh, remember uh, to frame the rules. And next is the changing of the TCP or IP options. TCP options can be altered by an attack like uh, the uh, MSS or window option, or that is maximum segment size or window option, or whether to go for increasing of the window size or decreasing of the window size. This kind of instructions should not be tam uh, altered in the TCP option. In same way, IP options also, originally intended as ways to insert a special handling instructions into packets. Attackers uh, mostly use IP options now for attack attempts. Uh, IT, IPv6, uh, if you use IPv6, uh, they remove the option field and replace it with the extension headers. So uh, this type of attacks, uh, option related attacks may be possible on the IPv4, uh, but not on the IPv6. Next one is fragmentation abuse, uh, where you will uh, try to change the maximum transmission unit. Uh, packets larger than the MTUV, MTU, uh, will be obviously fragmented, the, thereby you may get the fragmented packets. So this is entirely based upon the MTU. And also whenever the MTU is changed, automatically the window size will also change. Whenever the window size changes, the transmission rate also change. So like that, uh, one, is, uh, one is linked to the other. So an IDF, IDPS should be configured to send an alarm if it encounters a large number of fragmented packets. And also very fine grained packets, which is a packet which is less than 400 bytes. That also to be uh, identified. Fragmentation abuses, uh, like uh, in case of IPv4, overlapping of the fragments, uh, fragments that are too large, fragments overwrite data, fragments are too small. All these things thing should be uh, in a position to detect by the IDPSS. And uh, for this, uh, you should have the complete understanding of uh, TCP fragmentation or IP fragmentation and uh, what are the possible, what are the functionality of this fragmentation in a clear way. Anyhow, we have discussed this fragmentation and how this fragmentation works uh, in the earlier lectures. In case of IPv6, uh, fragments with the destination address of a network device and fragmentations are too small, fragmentations that arrive too slowly can be identified, should be identified. And what are the advanced, possible advanced attacks on the IDPS, especially to evade the IDPS? For example, polymorphic buffer overflow attack. They use the tools such as AD mutate, uh, that is who will use this, attackers will use this, especially to conduct the buffer overflow attacks. Whenever the buffer overflow attacks was identified, buffer overflow is related to the memory, but not to the network. So the memory has to be handled. Usually IDPSS won't handle this kind of memory things. So it, they won't, uh, they will usually identify the traffic related things. So that, that, uh, that uh, uh, quality was uh, taken as an advantage by the attackers and uh, used to offer the buffer overflow attacks. Alters and attacks shell code to differ from known signature may IPA, IDPS use. One packet reach the target, they reassemble in the original form. And uh, after uh, after processing of this packet at the destination, it will uh, it will conduct the buffer overflow attack. Uh, thereby, the memory will be leaked. So, path of uh, obfuscation, directory path in payload of is uh, uh, is uh, obfuscation means is nothing but a, a wrong uh, uh, pattern will be wrong uh, sorry a wrong directory uh, path will be mentioned in this by using multiple forward slashes. Uh, like a slash slash, one is for escape sequence, one is for the directory indication, like that. So thereby, finally, whenever you combine uh, by eliminating the escape sequences and all, uh, the directory path may be different than the original path. Usually, this kind of things will be happened on the web servers, especially to explore the web server directories. Common gateway interface scripts, so CGA scripts uh, usually will be used for connecting to the gateways. Uh, the, by the, in, especially to in the case of web applications and web uh, uh, web related things, scripts used to process the data submitted over the internet. 
like uh, count.cga from mail any form php.cga which are most commonly used configuration scripts in the web servers packet injection uh, attackers can craft the packets and can comply with the protocol and can be injected into the traffic so for this you may use a tool called netwox n e t w o x netwox netwox is a tool which supports uh, more than uh, uh, more than 100 wide variety of uh, uh, fabricating of the packets okay If, including from the icmp arp to the uh, ip uh, i will uh, i will post another video on the netwox how to use the netwox and all uh, so you can go through that next tools such as uh, 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 nemesis are supposed to be useful for testing the idps and firewalls so that means not only idps itself is not the final one again this need to be tested whenever they develop it okay remote processor calls this is very dangerous you know the remote processor call and its related uh, uh, signal uh, related services are exploited then uh, attacker can easily connect to the system via remote uh, call or remote things so standard set of communication rules uh, will be exploited in general in this so next one is port mapper maintains a record of each remotely accessible program and port it uses converts the rpc program numbers into tcp ip port numbers so that means here idpss rules should be necessary in should be framed in such a way that any request coming to the rpc ports must be clearly monitored and uh, you should also specify what are the tcp related ports ip rpc ports uh, uh, diversion or port diversion to the tcp ports must be detected by the idpss these are the rules must be set in the idpss rpc related events uh, should trigger the idps alarm like rpc dump rpc set spoof rpc network file system sweep so this kind of uh, uh, request or re remote processor call request must be in a position to identified by the idps to summarize uh, in the in this series of uh, um, lectures related to the network monitoring and traffic uh, analysis the common vulnerabilities and exposures have been seen that is uh, which is consisting of the cve repository which is especially to uh, which is especially dedicated for uh, recording of the vulnerability events interpreting network traffic signature can help preventing net network intrusions analysis of traffic signature is an integral aspect of intrusion prevention in which uh, you need to have the strong understanding of uh, tcp flags uh, udp udp uh, icmp ip and arp what well, you should also know what is meant by normal traffic and what is abnormal traffic suspicious network events like orphan packets land attacks local host source spoof falsified protocol numbers illegal combination of tcp flags and other advanced attacks related to the remote processor calls and uh, common gateway interface vulnerabilities misusing the remote processor calls command injection related things this should be they should be well known to you then only you can write a effective rules in the intrusion detection systems so this is what the end of the identification of the abnormal traffic lecture